Problem 7. For how many values of the constant k would the polynomial given have two distinct integer roots? So, with this, what are the key words in this question? Roots. And a polynomial. Wait a minute, there's a root and there's a polynomial. This must be Vietas. Well, even if it's not Vietas, it should at least give us a direction of how we need to approach this question. Vietas formula is very special because it tells us the relationship between the roots and the coefficients of a given polynomial. And the reason why that's important for all cases of questions, no matter how high you go in the competitive mathematics, is because they give you an idea of how to problem solve, how to approach the question, what to think, what patterns to find, what to generalize. So always, when you see roots, when you see a polynomial, it should be second nature. You should think Vietas. What is Vietas? Well, what is Vietas? Ax squared plus bx plus c. It basically says that for any given polynomial with any of constants a, b, c, the product of the roots, so x1 times x2, would be equal to c over a, and the summation of the roots will give you negative b over a. Now you might be asking, wait, how did I know there are two roots? Well, the fundamental theorem of algebra basically says that for an nth power of polynomial, there are n roots. So since we have a, uh, a quadratic, we must have two roots, x1, x2, x1, x2 right here. So let's apply this to this question. And it's a, it's a quadratic, so Vietas works very well in quadratic. What is x1 times x2? For simplicity, I'm going to call it, um, let's call it, you know, y and x and y. Because, you know, I don't like to really call it x1 and x2. That's easy to be confused. So for x and y, x times y, they're the roots. So that must be equal to the constant 36 over 1, which is the coefficient of x squared, which gives 36. Now, what is x plus y? Well, x plus y is negative b over a, which is negative k over 1. Now, x and y right here are roots of, or rather, factors of 36. So they're factors of 36, then we can just list them out and we'll be done, right? Because then, whatever they sum up to, we must have some very distinct terms. So for x and y right here, we have 0, oh, we can't have 0, right? Because that's not a factor. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. That would be 36, that would be 18, that would be 12, that would be 9, that would be 6. But wait a minute. We know that the product of two numbers must give a positive term. So what are the possible cases? A positive times a positive gives a positive, and also a negative times a negative gives a negative. It's these little minute details that can trip you up on a, any competition. So when you see this, make sure you consider all cases. And to consider all cases, that just takes practice and intuition that comes from doing a lot of practice. So when I see that two numbers multiply to give to a positive number, they must have the same sign. That's, you know, very basic, right? So we have an even number of terms. So both must have the same sign. They can be positive or negative because they're the only two signs possible. So this is the first case for x and y. But what about the next case? Well, the next case is where all of them are negative. So we have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 6, which will just be the negative of everything else. Negative 36, 18, 12, 9, and 6. Now, what is x plus y in, this, in these two cases? Well, for x plus y, I'll just label it right here, right, in this um, leftmost row. That would be 37, that would be 20, that would be 15, that would be 13, that would be 12. But, x plus y is negative case. We just take negative of everything else, and that would be just possible values of k. Now, what are the possible values of k from this, uh, from the, oh, that's a bit too tiny. What is the possible values of k for this row right here? Well, that'll just be negative 37, or the negative of that will give you positive 37. That'll be a 20, that'll be 15, that'll be 13, that'll be 12. So now we have 10 solutions. But wait a minute, why is this wrong? What is the suspicion I should have? They told you, we should have two roots, right? But notice what the roots here are. They are the same. So if they're the same root, then that means we can factor this into x minus 6 squared and x plus 6 squared. We want two roots. There's only one root when x is equal to 6 or x is equal to negative 6. So therefore, we must cancel out this case and cancel out this case. Therefore, we have a total of originally 10 solutions because we have 10 distinct values of k minus the two un, um, unworthy roots to give you 8. So we should have an answer choice of answer choice B.